Hello, this is Steven, and today we are playing Dead Secret. It is a first-person horror mystery game, and I'm going to start a new game. I played for about an hour already, and, you know, I've really enjoyed what I've played so far, so I am excited to share with you. September 25th. Paris Bullard was Oops. found dead in his study five days ago. Nobody believes me, but I think he was murdered. This house in the middle of nowhere holds the secret. There's a story hiding here, and I'm going to cover it. If I'm right, there are four major suspects. Graham Wellington, Josie Herrera, Cynthia Peckman, Bobby Sawyer. I'm not leaving until I find out what happened. All right, so we are going to figure out the story, and we see her. She has a arm in a sling, so she hurt her arm. Of course, I'm narrating the obvious. Um, this is it, the crime scene. All right. So this game was actually made for VR, but I am playing it just normal because um, I feel like it. Yeah. Okay. A small parcel tied tightly with twine. Ooh, say that five times fast. A small parcel tied tightly with twine. Tied tight tightly with twine. Tied tightly with twine. Tied tightly 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 tied tightly with twine. Wow, I love it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I amused myself. It's addressed to Jay Herrera and was sent from downtown Gov. I need something to cut the twine if I want to peek inside. Okay. Reclusive professor found dead in home. September 23rd, 1965. Kansas. Harris Bullard. Harris Bullard, a retired college teacher, was found dead in his home Monday. The body was discovered by Bobby Sawyer, who worked part-time for Bullard running odd jobs. A police investigation has concluded that Bullard died of natural causes. He was 63. Bullard moved into his home on Rampo Way several years ago, but was rarely seen about town. He was a private and reclusive man who seemed to have few friends. Bullard raised eyebrows last year when a former student, a pretty young woman named Josie Herrera, moved in with him. Bullard's will, written in 1957, leaves his entire estate to his ex-wife Cynthia Peckman. Peckman will reportedly sell the house and its contents immediately. Harris was a genius in his discipline, said Graham Wellington, a former colleague. The field of neuroscience is considerably poor without him. I probably shouldn't read everything out loud because, I don't know, maybe I will, if I feel like it. Harris Bullard, retired recluse, found dead in his study, police ruled death natural. Bobby Sawyer, ran errands for Bullard, found the body. Josie was a living assistant. Ex-wife Peckman inherited. Ah, ba, 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 ba. Piano. No piano. It's blocking the way. This is it. The crime scene. This is it. This is it. Oh, locked. Okay. Can you walk any faster? Small key. Missing its knob. Okay. Small key, unlock the door. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Oops, no, go back. I wanted to get the memo. The Snow Woman. Adapted from an original translation by Lafcadio Hearn. An old man and his son climbed a mountain to collect firewood. It began to snow heavily, and unable to make it back home, they decided to pass the night in a small hut. In the middle of the night, the young man awoke to see that the door had been blown open. A tall woman with long hair and a white kimono was leaning over his father, blowing her breath upon him. When she saw that son was awake, she said, You are a handsome young man. 
so I will let you live. But if you ever speak of this to anyone, your life shall be forfeit. In the morning, the young man found his father frozen and dead. He climbed down the mountain alone and never spoke of the episode. A year later, he met and married a young, beautiful girl. They had children together and were happy. But the night of his father's death still weighed heavily on his mind. One night, after having a bit too much to drink, the man told his wife about the encounter with the snow woman. She was furious. You promise not to tell! She screamed, and before his eyes she became the tall woman with the long black hair and a white kimono. If it were not for our children, I would end your life here and now. I will spare you for their sake, but if anything ever happens to them, you shall pay the price! And with that, she melted into the wind and was gone. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Dictionary and language references. Looks like a lot. But these books aren't even reach. Lafcadio Horn. One is missing. Gotta find the missing book. Find the missing book. Missing book, missing book. I've been around the world. Hey, hey. I've been around the world. What's this? Are you done? Oh, hey, cool. Oh, hey. Small box. Let's get a better look at it on the desk. Why did that happen? Okay, I must have accidentally clicked on that spot on the map. That's that's what happened. That's what happened. I was just trying to spin it, but I guess I accidentally I accidentally clicked it. That's that's okay. Alright. It looks like a note with a foreign symbol on it. Underneath it reads north. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. Your past has caught up with you. It is over. What's this? Who is Woodcutter? Alright, add that to our notes. Scissors! Reep, reep, reep. Mm -hmm. Nothing in there. Oop. Tiny camera lens. Yep. Something's typed out here, but the paper is so far into the feeder that I can't pull it out. Well, can't you... Like, type it. Yeah, that's what I said. Roll it back out. How do I do that? Okay. Got it. Writing about Ouija boards in 1852, William Benjamin Carpenter was the first to describe the phenomenon known as the idiomotor effect. The idiomotor effect occurs when the subconscious mind takes control of the body without the conscious mind realizing it. Idiomotor action is distinct from other forms of involuntary action because responses are driven by existing knowledge and perception. The Ouija board, Carpenter suggested, is a clear manifestation. The participants unwittingly move the planchette because their subconscious mind is guiding them. Another example of this phenomenon is dowsing, the practice of using the divining rod to locate water or other materials buried underground. The dowser holds the instrument in both hands and allows it to lead him forward until it points down at the ground, seemingly by itself. For centuries, dowsing was believed to be a form of magic or witchcraft, but we now know that it can be explained by the idiometer effect. The dowser's subconscious mind is highly sensitive and is able to recognize cues in the environment of which his conscious mind is not aware. When those cues hint at the location of water, the subconscious mind takes control of the dowser's hand and causes him to rotate the rod to the ground. Since the conscious mind is not involved in this operation, the instrument seems to move on its own, pulled as if by some magical force. In reality, it is the dowser himself who is divining. His subconscious mind is responsible both for the detection of buried materials and for the motion of the rod. My research seeks direct access to the knowledge stored in the subconscious mind. Complete, unfiltered linkage between the sensitive unconscious and the logical conscious. I call this state, idiot focus. Alright. Some hint of further story. Oh, here's more stuff. Joe, something is after me. It's creeping around the house, trying to get in. I'm sure of it. 
I heard footsteps outside and creaking on the roof. It's not safe here. I've taken the area focal lenses from their normal location and hidden them in my study. I've sent you a package that you'll know what to do with. Check the map for the mask. As usual, X marks the spot. Harris. The sequence is west, east, north. Okay. Hit something in this room. Very suspicious. It would be a great hook for my opening paragraph. Oh yeah, because you're a writer, so everything is about your story. So this says... Yes, I know, that says north. Doesn't turn on, guess it's broken. Got a book. Ooh, there's another lens. I found two of them now. Record player, but there's no record. <clears throat> it's a picture of a woman. She's wearing a white kimono and standing in the snow. Oh my god! Something about this painting makes me uncomfortable. It's very bleak. What is that? <laughs> ah! What 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 even was that? It was just the music. Oh god, that was dumb. Oh my god, I can't believe I fell for that. Oh, I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> oh, okay. It kind of feels like they're looking at me. What do they see in this room? I've seen, I've seen masks like this before. Maybe they are Japanese. Quantum mechanics and functional analysis. Not exactly light reading. Oh, God. I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> Doors locked from the other side. Okay. Diplomas. No, 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 no. I guess I'm going to unlock the... Unlock? Uh, 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 cut the string. Cut the tightly twined, tightly twined, twine, twid, tied, tightly twined. <coughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That was my dog barking, but I am back now. There we go. There's a page from a manuscript here. The man who could see with the skin. Alright, in 1926 I met a man who could see with his skin. His eyes were sealed with wax and bandaged, yet he remained aware of the room around him. He held up signs which he read and fingers which he counted, even when we stood behind him. After the performance I gave him $200 for the secret. He explained that he could see as long as some part of his skin remained exposed to the air. He described it as a shift in the wind or a slight breeze on his face subtle motion of the hair on his arm. After years of focus and practice, he had developed oops. He had developed the ability to form a mental image of his surroundings based only on these slight sensations. This man had achieved a form of idiofocus. Granted, he only had access to a very narrow range of sensory information, but the result was powerful. I immediately resolved to discover the secret of his ability. Now, almost four decades later, I am very close. All right. Oh, what is that? Oh. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. It's an old book. It says, "Quiet on, quiet on." On the cover, whatever that means. The author is Lafcado Hearn. Old book. But. But. Okay.
So, okay, I guess I'm still investigating the crime scene. But, what was that? Oh, now the TV's on. But wasn't it broken earlier? Not just off, but like broken. See? It doesn't turn on, guess it's broken. Okay. There's still no record in there. Yeah, I get it. So... Am I missing something? Oh, oh, book. Book, 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 book. Okay, there's something jammed way back there. Flat triangular wedge. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you mail yourself a book just so that you can know, oh, there was something behind the book? I don't know. But you know what? At least it can go here. If north is uh, that, and what was the right combination? I forgot already. I forgot. West, east, north. Got it. West, east, north. West, east, north. West, east, north. Ta-da! Whoa! Monkey face! The, the lenses fit into the face. Okay. Ooh. Ah. Uh, okay. I actually knew he was going to be there. Alright. Okay, yeah. I remember now. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Something more to this painting. There was a page taped to the back. Josie, if you're reading this note, then something must have happened to me. Josie! Uh, I may be dead and missing. If so, you're the only person who can save our research. The truth is, I'm being threatened. It started before I left the college. I get notes every few months from somebody calling himself Woodcutter. What he wants is access to our research. He wants me to turn over our plans for the Lunar Dream Apparatus. Josie, my life is in danger. Woodcutter knows things, secret things about my past that nobody should know. I'll not yield to a simple blackmail. But lately, the threats have escalated. I am sure that I am being watched at the house. I sometimes hear things on the other side of the wall. Yesterday, with a mask on, I thought I saw somebody reaching for me. It's a warning from my subconscious. I am no longer safe here. I've locked away our research in the safe upstairs. I want you to retrieve it and leave. Destroy everything before you go. Burn the house down if you have to. Just get the research and get out of here. Head for the big city where it's easy to hide. I'm counting on you, Joe. Don't let our work fall into their hands, Harris. All right. In the safe. Who is Woodcutter? Who is the milkman? Oh, okay, so it's a pop quiz. Harris's body was found by Graham. No? Bobby. I'm smart. He was worried about losing his secret research. The woodcutter.
some real evidence. Okay, time to go upstairs. Do 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 do. Dun dun. Dun dun dun. Stop. Left or right? Whoa, hello there. How you doing? Just hanging around up there? Cool. Okay. Okay, mirror checks out. That's good. Alright, we got a puzzle to do here. Boop, boop, boop. And. No? Yeah? Yes. Old photo of two men on a ship. James Lowry and Harris Bullard. Emptied already. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. I know your secret. James Lowry sends his regards. <laughs> and there's the safe. But it's locked. Find the safe combination. Okay. Can I? Alright, let's go back. And now, clicky, clicky. Click, can I? May I? Alright. Click. Daily log, November 2nd, 1964. We did a test run of the idiofocal lenses today. At first, we did not know how to interpret the results, but now I believe they are working better than we anticipated. Instead of an unfiltered stream of sensory information, what we are seeing is subconscious memory. The lenses distort in response to visual stimuli that the wearer has some knowledge of. They see what my subconscious, the conscious mind cannot. Josie proposed that we are really doing is mining dreams. Dreams are, after all, a form of idiofocus, a time when the subconscious comes forward and shows us truths that we might not otherwise recognize. What we are striving for is unrestricted access to dream thought. As a control mnemonic, the mask works per pretty well. I could tell that Josie was dubious at first, but now she understands. Subconscious thought is potentially dangerous to the subject. We will need a physical object to enable the mind to compartmentalize, provide Providing the wearer with some degree of cognitive protection. A permanent augmentation will require a much larger apparatus. We will need some other kind of focus mnemonic to help the brain control the deluge of dream information it will receive. Something large and ubiquitous. The moon, perhaps. Alright. The lenses in this weird mask. Dream thought. The moon. Dun 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 dun. The story. Getting interesting. Is there anything hiding in the fireplace? Logs. Ah, whoa! Okay. That's. His head moves when. Okay. Yeah, let's not look at that. Check out the other room. Paper. What do we have here? Dear Diary, today is an anniversary. It was five years ago today that I found Dad's name on an old research paper at U of C. He had written it in 1933, eight years before I was born. I didn't know he had gone to college. I had never really thought about his life. 
It was just a name on my books. The ship, but, but, but. Dad ran out on Mama after the war. He had gone off to fight and just never came back. When he stopped writing, Mama thought he had been killed. I remember her crying at the kitchen table. The war ended. Life went on. Mama died without ever finding out what happened to him. I used to hate him. Hated the idea of him. Hated my mother a little bit too. I figured dad was just a deadbeat who ditched mama because he didn't want a kid. When I found his name in the library, something changed. I couldn't stop thinking about him. Deadbeat dads don't study physics, do they? What is he doing now? What did he look like? Is he worried? Married to somebody else? I traced him here to Kansas, but finding him is taking longer than I had expected. Okay. So, Josie... Looking for her daddy. That's okay. Need a need a key. There's a paper. Hero says helicopter may win Vietnam War. All right. Medal of Honor winner from Kansas said today the helicopter may win the war in South of Vietnam. Won the nation's highest military award during World War II, manning a bazooka in Iwo Jima. Squadron operating along the coast. Destroyed 16 Japanese strongpoints. Uh, Kedoki. Okay, is that a hint? No. Oh! Hello again. Okie dokie. Um. Did I miss something downstairs? Must have missed something. Mm. I know what I need. I need the combination. Where would it be? Where would the combination be? If I was a combination to a safe, where would I be? I went to both rooms, so what would be in there? Oops. Did I check the drawers? I did not check the drawers. Everything in the drawers have already been packed already. Well, that's not helpful. All right. Um, I'm going to take a break to look around a little bit, and then I will see you in the next episode where I should have the safe combination. Thanks for watching.